Welcome back. Now imagine becoming a landlord in a highbrow area in Lagos just for becoming or just for being a loyal customer. And that's the case of 67-year-old Kenechuku Frank who emerged winner in the 120th anniversary special edition of First Bank Big Splash Savings promo. Mr. Frank was presented today with a four-bedroom fully detached house worth 50 million naira in the Lekki area of Lagos. Our correspondent Kelvin Obeten reports. Management and staff of First Bank PLC, representatives from the National Lottery Regulatory Commission, as well as journalists here at the boardroom of First Bank Corporate Headquarters, watch as the group managing director of the bank presents the keys to the grand prize winner of a four-bedroom terrace house. Mr. Kenechuku Frank, a trader from Abia State, is rewarded for keeping faith with the bank. We started this program, this reward scheme, about um, six years ago to reward our customers. This is the fifth anniversary of that particular exercise, and we reward them especially for their loyalty and patronage to the institution. From the boardroom, all roads lead to Diamond Estate in Ibejuleki as guests, family members, and friends gather again at the house location for the formal presentation. The Lagos State Commissioner for Housing, Bosun Jeje, cuts the tail. Mr. Kenechuku, to win this house today. Congratulations. This is the fifth season of the First Bank Savings promo, and interestingly, this year marks the fifth anniversary of Mr. Kenechuku's savings relationship with the bank. This is real. I'm telling people that First Bank is really the best and they should always remain the best. Whatever you are dealing with First Bank, they did it with total honesty and transparency. The building is fully fitted with kitchen, fitted kitchen, with water heater, all the sanitary wear, the Italian made sanitary wears, uh, all the tiling, the tiles we use, the Italian polished granite, uh, and the roof is the latest roof in town. We call it steel coated. Uh, steel coated roof, which is Gerard roof. The next promo, which we'll be doing in the next few months, which will start in the next few months, we will not be delivering a house. What we'll be doing is Hyundai vehicles, cash, generator, and smartphones. Mr. Kenichuku is one out of 6,000 customers that have won prizes worth over 500 million naira since the promo started in 2008. Kelvin Obetin, Channels Television News. Hello and welcome to Sports News. I'm Barong Tony Urenta. The Kwara State Governor, Abdul Fattah Ahmed, has flagged off the state's maiden sports summit with the call on governments at all levels to actively support and promote sports in all its ramifications as a way of enhancing national unity. Governor Ahmed said achievement of excellence in sports is anchored on long-term planning, early identification and growing of talent, and very important public sector participation. Nigeria's Super Falcons preparations for the African Women's Championship gathered momentum this evening as they pipped CL1 Soccer Academy for Boys by a lone goal and the FIFA Gold Project pitched at the Abuja National Stadium. The Falcons started the game with high intensity, putting their male counterparts under severe presser, but did not make the pressure count as they lost several good chances. Their persistence did pay off in the 20th minute when Ngozi Ebere converted a free kick from the edge of the 18-yard box after Asiad Oshuala was brought down. The second half saw the CR1 Academy boys dictate the pace, but the six-time African champions stood their ground, repelling their pressure and eventually winning the game. And the chairman of the Lagos State Football Association, Mr. Sheya Kiwumi, has called for a total rebranding of Nigerian football. He was speaking at a media briefing where he announced his candidacy for the post of first vice president of the FIFA NFF elective congress next week. Mr. Akiwumi insists that football in the country will become profitable only when the right leaders take over. And elsewhere, Portugal's new coach, Fernando Santos, has lost his appeal against an eight-match FIFA ban for misconduct at the 2014 World Cup. 
World Football Governing Body, FIFA, said its appeal committee rejected the former Greece coach's challenge. The 59-year-old coach verbally abused match officials during Greece's second round elimination by Costa Rica. He was hired by the Portuguese Football Federation on Tuesday, despite being banned from the touchline for eight competitive matches. Santos will serve the sanction during the 2016 European Championship qualifiers, though he can pick the team and attain, attend training sessions. And finally, we end with golf, where members of Europe's Ryder Cup team can't wait to get started as they bid to retain the trophy they won in 2012 against their American counterparts. Speaking at today's briefing, Germany's Martin Kamer and England's Justin Rose also talked about their preparation so far, as well as the chemistry within the team. And that's it on Sports News for tonight. I'm Barang Tony Ranta. Ijama will be back with the wrap. Now we shift focus from sports to update you on the situation with the ISIS militants and the Iraqi Prime Minister has said that the Islamic militants are plotting to launch attacks on the United States and Paris underground railway stations. And of course France has announced that it's not intimidated by the beheading of its national by ISIS and will do the opposite of what the extremist group has requested by boosting its support for Syrian opposition forces against ISIS. And here's Cynthia Are with more. Well, indeed, France remains determined, but in the meantime, the U.S.-led coalition has carried out airstrikes against the militants, targeting 12 oil refineries in Syria. Raids carried out by U.S., Saudi and UAE aircraft killed 14 of the group's fighters and five civilians in eastern Syria. Then, just like France and the United States, as well as its allies, David Cameron has confirmed that the UK is ready to play its part in fighting the Islamic State, which he called an evil against which the whole world must unite. Also today, things definitely seem to be heading in the right direction as regards Ukraine, as the president has confidently said the most of the dangerous part of the crisis in the East is over. Petro Poroshenko has no doubt that his peace plan will work, and he also unveiled a wide-ranging reform plan to get Ukraine ready to apply for EU membership come 2020. Finally, the trial of a man suspected to be one of the Boston Marathon bombers has been pushed back by two months to January. And that's the Foreign News Wrap-Up. It's back to you, Joe. Thanks a lot, Cynthia. And the main news again. The President has asked the United Nations to consider overhaul of the UN Security Council. He also made a strong case for more support for Nigeria's fight against terrorism. And the Director of Defense Information, Major General Chris Olukolade, has said that while Boko Haram has not been fully contained, the military is winning the war. Well, that's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks a lot for staying with us. Focus on Africa is up next. I'm Ijoma Good night.